Hello and good evening and welcome back to your Michelle Mark Knitwear podcast. We're now on episode 13 and today I'm going to update you on my latest projects. So I'm quite interested to talk about various things on my podcast and today um, just to add a bit of more interest I'm going to talk about Agatha Christie which is one of my favourite um, writers of the 21st century. Anyway, let me kick off by saying I hope everyone's well and enjoying the the weather as it's changing and it's getting more spring-like. Um, I must admit, spring is one of my favourite times of the year, so I hope you're all looking forward to spring the same as I am. It's getting lighter in the morning, so... It makes you want to get out of bed a bit earlier, although I still struggle to get out of bed because maybe sometimes I go to bed too late because I spend too many evenings knitting. Anyway, so today I'm quite excited just to update you that I finally finished my Fair Isle sweater, my 1940s um, sweater. Now, as you remember, I've already knitted one of these in the past, um, but I... I sort of was a bit of a coward and I didn't do the proper 40 sleeves. So I've done the sleeves. All I need to do is to fathom out what kind of padding to put in the sleeve because it is quite a big sleeve. So it needs a proper shoulder pad to give it that proper look. Otherwise it could look a bit bit saggy. Um, it is. It will be. I haven't tried it on yet so I hope it fits. But it should be quite a snug fit. I did um, press it last night before I put it together. So it's kind of, yeah, it sort of made it less crinkly looking. Um, so it's, yeah, so I'm quite pleased with that. Um, yeah, so I hope it does fit. I think it will, but it's just tighter than the other one. It looks quite big on here, but I'm hoping... It will look perfect. So yeah, just to remind you, it, it was a best way 1940s pattern. That's the photocopy I had. And it's also in the Susan Crawford, one of her Stitching Time books with the cardigan. Now, I would have knitted the cardigan, but I've looked at the amount of wool I had left for the maroon and I don't have enough. So that means instead of knitting the cardigan, I'm going to knit a matching beret. So I've already started knitting the beret. Um, and the beret has come from my Vintage Knits book that I bought a few years ago by Sarah Dallas. It's got some really lovely knitwear designs in this. Um, this is the actual beret I'm going to knit. But with a slight variation, um, I'm actually going to use the same pattern on this. As you remember, I used the graph. So I'm actually going to knit the same pattern for this beret. So I don't know how I'm going to get on when I get to the decreasing stage, but I'm... Um, I'm knitting it on the flat, I don't knit on circular needles, so I've already started, I think I'm on row 14, yeah I'm on row 14 at the moment, so I was knitting this last night, I quite like the pink edging on the brim of the beret, um, I hope it's going to be not too small, I'm sure it is, it's going to be fine, and it, I'll press it, but yeah, I think... Um, it's going to look nice. So yeah, hopefully on my next podcast I'll be able to share the um, end result with you. So what else have I been doing since my last podcast? Okay, so on my last podcast I told you that I'd knitted a nice little cardigan. That was on my dummy last time. Just a lovely um, Scottish tweed cardigan. Like a 19 sort of... 40s 50s design uh, for one of my clients and I've now knitted the beret to go with it so it's I've tried it on it's quite a snug fit so I know she's got a small head 
and it's the same design as the one I'm wearing. Um, it's like a 1970s beret design, but I quite enjoy knitting this one. It's just a little bit of interest and a bit different to the, you know, some of the other designs out there. So that's that one. Um, it was my husband's birthday, so he wanted to buy some wool with some of his birthday money. So he looked online at Lovecraft, which is one of the places that I buy my wool, and he decided he was going to buy some um, Debbie Bliss tweed because he wanted a beanie hat. So beanie hats, you know, there's many free patterns out there for beanies. So I found one that I thought was quite interesting. Now the thing is, I didn't because I'd never knitted one before. I didn't know how much wool I needed, so I did an over anticipate, and he ended up buying two different colours, um, <laughs> and we bought three balls of each, and we only used one ball, one fifty gram ball, and a bit. So that was, so he, he could have had a, you know, it would have been cheaper, and he could have even bought two balls of three different colours but never mind anyway it fits in perfectly um, when I started knitting it I mean I you know I followed the gauge on a, a pattern that I'd found and first off when I sort of started knitting the bottom bit I said mm, this isn't gonna fit so then I went up a needle size and even when I was knitting it I thought is it going to fit it's really difficult sometimes even when you knit on the flat see if something's going to fit but as it's quite stretchy um i just took the chance and i thought well if it goes wrong i can always undo it but i knitted it and yeah fits in perfectly so that's his blue one his blue denim one it's a lovely blue i mean it's typical men's color isn't it so now i'm knitting him this look quite bright it's not as bright as it looks on the camera this is like a, a sort of dark brick red but this is another tweed by Debbie Bliss so yeah that should be look, looking quite nice and I, I should get that finished off um, midweek um, so I tend to do that one like in my coffee breaks so what else do I need to talk about oh yeah so as you can see, um, I've also had time to knit another one of my favourite style jumpers, which is the little ski collar. And this design, I've actually found another, because I get bored if I keep knitting the same um, designs, I found another design online. And I think this is quite interesting. It's quite a nice sort of textured design. I don't know if you can see it on there, but yeah and it's beautiful wool and the actual wool i've got it's got blue flecks in it so it goes perfect with with the green so yeah it's got a lovely deep rib and like i said <laughs> you'll always find me in one of these sweaters in the in the winter because it's just my favorite design and it's so easy to knit that you know <laughs> you can never have enough ski sweaters so yeah, so I've knitted this in, I um, can't remember what type of wool it is, but it's, yeah, I did actually find that when I was knitting this, some of, one of the balls of wool was a bit fragile towards the end of the sleeve, so I had to stop using that ball of wool and, and use another one. So it can happen sometimes when you, you know, there are some imperfections and you don't know until you get halfway through a ball of wool that something's not right with it so anyway I'm quite happy with this and I will be knitting another one soon so <laughs> I don't think I'll be wearing it on the next podcast though because it's getting a bit warm now so I'll probably will be putting these away for the winter or next autumn so yeah I won't be wearing these again any day soon so that's it really on my knitwear. Um, I am sort of planning to knit a few more things and maybe as summer's coming I'll knit a few more cotton sweaters. Um, I actually, I was a bit naughty the other evening. Um, it's lethal sometimes, you go on eBay and you look, um, I look up all kinds of search terms and I, I just knew that I liked merino wool and I'm actually plotting a new 
pattern or you know I bought, bought one recently uh, which is another sort of um, sailor design and I'm just trying to think what colours to use and what type of wool to use as well um, so I was looking up merino wool on eBay the other evening and someone was selling some Wendy merino and they were selling four different packs <laughs> Um, the same person was sen selling four different colours like cream, navy, a lovely periwinkle blue and a pink. Well, <laughs> I, I just couldn't resist and it was all sort of finishing there and then that evening. And I thought, oh, there's loads of sweaters I can knit. It was four ply as well, so I can use it for some of my projects. So yeah, I was lucky enough to win my bid on all four and it, wor it worked out quite cheap actually and because it's all from the same seller it means that you can, you know, reduce the cost of the postage. So that was good. So yes, yeah, so I've got to plot out what I'm going to knit with those colours but there's lots of colours, you know, I mean them four colours alone would, would like make, you know, a few nice, really n nice sweaters. I mean you could plot your own capsule wardrobe if you wanted just with a few colours. Um, I'm sure there's people out there that do plot their own capsule wardrobes, but I love all different colours, so that's never gonna happen because there's always a, a colour that I like to wear on any ta any given day with any given skirt that's in my wardrobe. So I'm not ready to do capsule yet, but maybe in the future, when I get to that age where I think I don't need as many things and I'll maybe downsize and sell, sell a few things and stick to a few favorite colors. And as you get older, I suppose, you know, I might go for more muted colors, maybe more lilacs and um, pastel shades, but there you go. Anyway, so now I want to talk about one of my favorite um, authors, which is Agatha Christie. And I love Agatha Christie, and so does my husband. And back, as far back as 2010, um, we decided, I don't know how we found out about it, but we, we, we found out that there was an Agatha Christie festival every year in Torquay. So we treated ourselves one September. Um, I think it was because it was a special anniversary um, celebration it was 120 years since Agatha Christie's birth so we we caught the train it was a nice it was a nice train ride actually we had to change um, somewhere along the line and then um, yeah so the train station was right next to the hotel which was fabulous and the actual hotel we stayed in was the Grand Hotel which was the hotel where I think Agatha Christie had her a honeymoon at this um, the Grand Hotel. So, yeah, so it was an interesting stay. Although it was disappointing, um, we had a nice room, but the downside was, um, <laughs> oh, yeah, so we took all our vintage finery with us, you know, as you do when you're into vintage things, you want to dress up. Like for the daytime, especially we were celebrating this marble, so you know we knew we wanted to sort of sort of be there and be part of it. And obviously, when you dress in vintage clothes, you you know people do notice you. But it's just you know because it's our thing, it just seems appropriate. So anyway, so getting back to the hotel room, it's a lovely hotel room, but it was freezing. There was no heating on. And it was beginning of September and being by the coast, it was quite chilly. So we did have to ask them, like, can we please have some heating in our room? I can't remember if we actually got any heat, had any heating in the end, but it was a bit of a disappointment. You know, you sort of go to stay in these, you know, really good swanky hotels and you expect the best. But it's not always the case. But the food was lovely. You know, it was a lovely old hotel. Some of it was brand new, but there was a lot of original features. But yeah, we stayed there because we thought it was just lovely to, you know, stay in a hotel. And also they had um, a firework evening um, to mark the occasion. 
and they also they had Julie McKenzie who who played um you know the last um Miss Marple she was there so we met her I can't remember if we had her autograph or not but you know it was good fun and the fireworks were really impressive across the bay but yeah and it was just beautiful staying there I mean it's you know everyone knows that that's the best part of of England to visit you know it's beautiful up there I mean the weather's not so great but the scenery is just beautiful we went on a boat ride um, one day and we did all the usual we went to Greenways um, Agatha Chrissy's house um, had some photos taken there of me wearing my sweater and we also um, well something that was really interesting when we were there uh, we went to see um, Agatha Christie's witness for the prosecution. Um, every every year they they'll have like they've got a play, a theatre, the Princess Theatre, and they'd have you know some well known actors and actresses um, performing one of Agatha Christie's um, plays. So we went to see it earlier in the week, and when we went to Greenways, um, we were on on the little vintage bus and um, we were approached by um, an actress that was actually we didn't realize but she was actually in the in the play Deborah Grant if you see her that's that lady and she's actually been in quite a few well-known um, TV programs and films um, she's well known for being in UFO and she was also in Bouquet of Barbed Wire. I don't know if many people remember that, but I do remember watching um, Bouquet of Barbed Wire in the 70s or the 80s. So she's been in quite a few things. And yeah, so she approached us and, and said that they were looking for extras on the last night we were there um, to be in the stage production and to pretend we were in the galleries of the courthouse. And um, she said, oh, you know, here's my telephone number. I'll ring the, the guy who was, you know, the, the play director and just be on hand um, to be extras. <laughs> so so I, I thought, this is brilliant. You know, what a way to top off, you know, the, the week in um, Torquay. So we said, yeah. So we, we actually rang them and... And yeah, they said come along. So I sort of wore a nice little vintage um, suit that I had, which was like a maroony colour suit, and my husband sort of dressed up. So when we got there, um, I think they just gave me a little scarf to wear, but apart from that, everything I was wearing was just right for the actual play. So it was really good fun because we were sitting and talking to all the actresses um, in the, in the um, changing rooms and we got to t like have a drink with them afterwards at the bar and it was just really lovely and we actually um, when um, Deborah Grant comes down to like Westcliff um, we've met up with her a couple of times after like some theatre productions because you know we kind of kept in touch really and it's really nice to catch up with her and I don't know what she's doing now she's probably retired now but yeah, so it was just really nice. And I, you know, I always remember that. We actually also, we got, got to talk on one of the walking tours. There's a lovely old lady who was 100 last year. Her name's Joan Knott. And she did the Agatha Christie walking tour. Um, she's probably not doing it now. She's not so agile. Um, but we kept in touch with her daughter and her husband. So every Christmas we send them a Christmas card and we get a lovely letter back. And yeah, so last year she reached the ripe old age of 100. So just to let you know, um, Joan Knott, um, she was friends with Geraldine, who was Agatha Christie's daughter. Um, not she didn't grow up with her she just met her in later life and obviously a lot of the tales of Agatha Christie um, of her life she she was you know told a few things and that's why you know she was close friends with Geraldine um, towards her later life I don't know if she's still alive now but 
Yeah, so it's really interesting and I'd love to go back there one year. Who knows, but it was really good fun. But we, we also actually, it was funny because um, there was a, um, an, um, a writer there for um, one of the newspapers called Lucy Mangan. I think she's also um, an author. She's written books. And she interviewed us, and it was funny because um, we were re we found the article in in the magazine. I've got it here somewhere. I can't see where I've got it, but yeah, she wrote an article about meeting us, and it was so funny because she mentioned something about my husband, like he, you know, he loved old thing, old fashioned, being old fashioned. And that's it. This is it. She. Um, it was called Murder and May, Mysterious Appeal of Agatha Christie, Lucy Mangum Investigates. So she was there the whole time and we only met her on the, the, the first day, the whole day we were there. But she, she wrote a, an article and there was a mention of us in there. <laughs> we, we save everything when we go, we have like a folder because we don't do many holidays when we do. It's a special thing, you know, and um, I think you appreciate it when you do, you know, different things. If you did it all the time and you wouldn't appreciate it, but yeah. So anyway, getting back to my Miss Marple, uh, we don't have the books, but we've got all the box sets. So we've got a whole box set of Geraldine McEwen and that's the, um, I've forgotten her name, Julia McKenzie. And we've also got the original Joan Hickson, uh, Miss Marple. We love all that. And aside from Miss Marple, we've also um, got the whole collection of Poirot. Can you believe? Um, oh, years and years ago, there was a new collection that came out where you could collect a booklet and a, a DVD of Poirot series every month from WH Smiths so we started collecting it but it turned into a bit of fiasco WH Smiths were really disorganized and some weeks we go or if one month we go in there and they wouldn't have any and then they'd have two and then they'd have another month where there was none and then you know it was a real old mess and in the end we just thought mm, are we going to actually get all these you know, it's it's so annoying because we wanted the whole collection. So I think in the end, we have, we've got quite a few. I think there must be about 40, 40 or 50 Poirot episodes. So, and the good thing about it is that it came with a booklet. So the booklet is really interesting because it tells you about the characters, the plot, and a bit of background to the filming of each episode. So I can talk about some of the other um, sort of episodes and some of the other things that we like and some of our other adventures because we have been to a few other things because we love all the Art Deco period and everything and you know there are other places that we've been that we really like and I'll talk about that on another podcast. But yeah, so when it gets back, like talking about Poirot, my favourite episodes are Evil Under the Sun Sad Cypress and Three Little Pigs. I mean, I like a lot of the others as well, but them three, especially Three Little Pigs, the music in that is beautiful. It's quite sad, and the, and the storyline's really sad, but it's just really good acting, and that's what we enjoy most. So yeah, so that's that. I don't think there's anything else to cover with regards to Torquay, but. Yeah, that was a lovely holiday and I look forward to going back to Torquay one day, maybe when the weather's nicer and everyone's, you know, giving, given some freedoms, if that's at all possible in the future. Who knows, but at least we have our memories of times gone by when we did have some freedom and life was fun. So on that note... I'll say goodbye from me. I hope you've really enjoyed my little update. And next time, hopefully, I will show you the beret to match. And I might actually be wearing this, although 
I hope it would be a bit cooler. You know, if I was wearing it on a hot day, it's not so good. But yeah, so I should be wearing my new beret very soon. So take care and maybe next time I'll talk about what my next projects are going to be. Um, I've got a few things up my sleeve, so hopefully I can share more with you next time. So until then, just to let you know, you can find me on Instagram. And my Instagram account is Mark Knitwear. Um, I'm on Etsy. I have got a little shop on Etsy. And you can, that is Michelle Mark Knitwear. And I think that's all really. I have got a blog spot, which I haven't used for years. I might bring it to life again one day. But too busy knitting. So hopefully I'll, um, you know, there's many things I can do, but time just runs out. So there you go. Anyway, so have a good week and I hope you've enjoyed it. If you want to look at some of my old um, episodes, you can look back at some of my previous episodes. And um, yeah, if there's anything you'd like me to share with you or anything you'd like to ask, then please do leave a comment. And if you don't want to miss an episode, then obviously smack the bell to subscribe and to be reminded of my next one. So hopefully I will see you again soon. Enjoy the rest of your evening or your day and catch you later.